I find it pretty hard to imagine a hut with chicken legs and dancing in the forest. But I suppose after a few pints you might start seeing something like that too. Must have managed it. Must have been all that vodka. Hello everybody, I hope your day is okay and uh, this coronavirus thing has uh, hadn't affected you and uh, you're just staying safe and well. Um, I'm still in lockdown as you can uh, probably know by now and uh, once the uh, area I'm in I've been pretty quiet, the signs of it started to stir a bit now because people have been in lockdown for too long but they should stay at home and I recommend that you do so until it's very safe to go out again. At least that's what I'm going to be doing. Anyhow, the dancing hut of uh, Baba Yaga. Now, this derived from the old Russian legend of a, a woman who used to fly around the forest um, in a um, in a mortar, breathing a petal, and had a hut in the forest itself as well with chicken legs. And um, it's an old Russian legend, and she was both benevolent, you know, uh, kind, and malignant. You know, it depends on which version of the stories you listen to. And there are hundreds of them in uh, Russia. So they tried to put these into Dungeons and Dragons terms or role playing terms uh, way back when. In the um, Dragon magazines, for instance, there are several versions of uh, the Baba Yaga's hat there. And also in the Dungeon Master's Guide, where this features as an artifact and uh, described by Gary Gygax, uh, as you can see in here. Now, uh, there was a model that came out of Lisa's Magman in 1995 which tried to explain why there were so many different versions and also provide a model, an adventure model if you like, uh, excuse me. Uh, her idea of it was that this uh, dancing hat can travel from one world to another. Well, as you go from one world, it changes, or well, the interior of it changes, the outside still is the same. So that explained why there's so many different uh, descriptions of the interior of the hut. It sort of came with like a, a sort of get out clothes if you like. And uh, that's what she did, that's what she did in the uh, model to try and explain away all the differences by saying yes. Go from one place to another and changes are the consequence of going to our place. Now, uh, the beginning of the model is um, the, the venture hooks up there, but uh, the venture hook that I used at the time was there was a very strange sound of explosions and thunder and lightning in the middle of a forest somewhere out there. And uh, the plane kind of rasped by the uh, local bar and or mayor or wherever you want to put up in the uh, upper echelons uh, to go and investigate this phenomenon and day is becoming night and becoming day and there's all sorts of strange things going on with the the uh, the, 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 uh, the days the 24 hours of the day so yes yeah, so off they go and uh, they travel through the forest and they come to the clearing where they discover uh, Bobby Agra's hut uh, which is surrounded by skulls stuck on poles so you have to get past that and then into the hut itself and have to discover then how to get into the hut itself because what they just see when they open the door is just a, a normal shack but there are secret ways of going in further into the hut. So once they discover that, they're then into a, a hut which the author describes as being a chance dimensional uh, place. A bit like the TARDIS in Doctor Who, but it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Uh, but all you've done is well, it's like a hexadeximal kind of shape with the um, bits coming off, the other bits. Now the only way to, once you've explored one particular area, only way to get to the other areas is by secret knocks which you put on the doors. And when you tap the doors in a certain sequence, you can actually go through then into that new area and explore it from there. Um, if clues with the knocks are scattered around the uh, particular places, so after the uh, playing cards to discover then, that's an option. I mean, if you want to, just simply say they can go straight from the door and they're into another area. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's not a bad idea, actually, to let this sort of uh, effect that goes on in order to be able to say you can fully explore that particular place before you move on to the next. Um, there's different uh, rooms in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the module itself, and uh, they all wildly vary, and uh, this shows a breath of imagination that the author had at the time. For instance, you can walk straight into your own stomach and walk up through your guts. And if you try to take a slash of uh, the, uh, the walls, which are obviously uh, stomach walls, then uh, you end up killing yourself. 
or you go to through the town, the uh, the intestines, the place. Well, you won't go there. Anyhow, uh, there's also uh, downtown Tokyo where there are also rampaging around and so on and so forth. There's barely, barely um, different rooms and have different effects, different tricks, different traps, and different levels of difficulty. So I said that. Uh, because uh, the model's breadth of uh, levels is quite broad. And as you go further into the uh, dungeon, the harder it really become and there's in some rooms which if the players are not very careful, it can be total particles or TPK of a sort. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind when you're actually running the model because uh, if they're not careful, you could just totally wipe them out uh, because of this. Now as for the storyline itself, uh, the actual thing is that Bobby Yaga has uh, managed to capture uh, evening, night and day, which is why she can affect the, uh, the hours around the area to which she's in. Now according to the model, you can get it globally with it happen to whatever world she goes into. Um, so I sort of restricted it to that particular area where the hours are totally different. Like you're eating lunch and right in the middle of the night. You know, you're fast asleep during the hike in the uh, daytime. And that sort of thing. Um, so what it is, is the uh, family Arga wants to try and conquer death. Um, in the hut itself, she laid a trap uh, to try and do exactly that. So when death does come knocking, uh, she can then trap him and extort uh, or her if you like, uh, get a promise out of the, the entity, which is probably a safer way of saying it, the entity to um, uh, say that she that death would completely ignore Baba Yaga in future and therefore she would never die, so she contains immortality that way. Um, so the trap's been set, now she's just waiting for him to turn up. And in order to get him to turn up, she can uh, the control of minor deaths. Whichever world she's in, she manages to get control of them. So she's hoping then that the influence of them in that will bring, <coughs> bring death in. <coughs> it's not the virus, it's just uh, me clearing my thought. Um, so back in a nutshell is it, so the playing characters can explore all the way through to the uh, end and uh, actually um, defeat uh, Baba Yaga if you want to. Or destroy the trap that she set and then get out somehow. Um, in the model itself, spells, some of them don't work, they really mean to harm the hut itself, which is a living entity by the way. Um, the spells don't work. Uh, you can't read minds or any entities in there, and you can't sky through walls or anything like that. Only Baba Yaga could do that. And in the model, she's like a, a peripheral bond villain, if you like, always lurking in the background, never quite stepping forward into the limelight and um, revealing yourself. Um, if you want to run it that way, that's fine. Because if you do uh, have the player characters encountered in uh, Baba Yaga, she's a TPK in and of herself because she's just so powerful. She cannot be killed in the hut. And the playing characters will find out that they cost outside the hut, she's a little bit weaker and therefore just about beatable. But it's getting outside the hut in the first place to do that, which is next to be impossible. So, the uh, idea of keeping her in the background as a peripheral character is a better one, you know. Which is all around, you could sense her present everywhere, but you never quite meet her. Which is still a good idea, as I said. You're not giving the player characters a chance if you put uh, them up against her. It's up to you if you want to do that. I'm not going to stop you. Um, so overall, the quality of the model is a lot better than uh, would have been the case. Uh, well, put it this way. If this model had been printed during the 80s when uh, the first edition Dungeons & Dragons was about and the quality of the model if you compare from then to this one you'll find that it's only lacking but if you compare the model to what would been published in 1995 and onwards you'll find it's a higher standard because uh, TSR started getting quite substandard back in the day and therefore the models we were producing weren't all that good I'll be reviewing them in the future and you'll soon see which ones I'm talking about but having said that, it's not a bad uh, adventure, they're quite workable and the rooms uh, and the different diff 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 individual room is quite nice, I like it, you know, uh, she showed quite a breadth of imagination, the author. So, um, yes, and I understand why she didn't do a huge lot more of uh, this stuff, because that shows uh, how good she can get, you know. So, yes, it's a nice adventure, it's workable, if you tweak it, you're in there with bits and pieces to make sure that it does flow a little bit better, and it's also uh, a little, little bit easier for the characters to actually overcome because there are some parts of it which are very deadly and they can't help getting killed even if you're not being stupid in that, you know, that particular area 
you can be as clever as you want, uh, but it more of yourself will kill them. So you've got to sort of dial it back a little bit. You give them a better chance of actually going through, not to make it too easy for them, but you understand, such. Just make it you know, a little bit difficult, but not so, when they can't get anywhere. And that's pretty much it, really. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little review. I you just get up there, grab a model if you can, and start playing when you're playing kind of uh, especially on, say, a Friday night with your friends, and I uh, one or two, and uh, a couple of uh, crisps. And just enjoy yourself. So take care, everybody. Walk on.